I've only recently been won over by the practicalities that modular helmets can bring, but they can also have some downsides. So in this video, I want to take a look at this, the Shark Evo GT, and see how it fares against some of its competition. French manufacturer Shark have gone down a different route to the majority of the modular helmets, and this is less of a modular and more of a convertible. It's a two-in-one helmet, if you like. Now, the major difference with this is instead of the chin bar just raising up to the standard position, it rotates all the way around. To enable this chin bar to move all the way back, uh, when you open it, it runs on kind of an elliptical path, which means that it lifts that chin bar up out of the way, so it clears the visor as it goes back and then it pops back down again. For me, there's a bit of an aesthetic drawback to this system because the chin bar has to be quite a bit wider than the top profile of the helmet. So uh, the first thing I saw, and it may just be this particular colorway, when I looked at this, I couldn't get a picture of the Iron Giant out of my head with this big jawline. But to be honest, that's only a minor aesthetic gripe and that's personal to me. I don't think it's a bad looking helmet, particularly if you like a little bit of futuristic styling. Right, before I get into the meat of the review and how it performs on the road, let's take a look at some of the technical specifications of this. The shell of this helmet is made from thermoplastic, which means that you get good, even, regular moulds from this, but to get the strength, the thermoplastic tends to be a little bit thicker and it tends to make these helmets a little bit heavier. This one in a size large weighs in at 1,826 grams. It comes in just two shell sizes. So you've got one shell for extra small, small and medium, and the other shell for large and extra large. As you would expect from this ECE2205 certified helmet, it has a multi-density EPS liner. And as with most modular helmets that I've come across, if not all modular helmets, it comes with a micrometric ratchet strap. Now, I know some people are not fans of these. I personally, on the helmets I've worn, have never had any issue with them. I don't see anything wrong with, obviously, a good old-fashioned double D-ring, uh, but that doesn't seem to be the best fixing for these type of helmets. The Evo GT has an optical class one visor, so the vision from this is incredibly clear, and it comes with a Pinlock 120 in the box ready for you to fit. And that's one other small gripe I have with this helmet is the removal and fitting of the visor. Now it's relatively straightforward, but it feels a little bit brutal. Admittedly, because of the drop down visor, you're probably only going to take this off once to fit the pin lock, but it is a little bit of a pain. You've got a small tab in here, uh, which is kind of a, a release. You have to press that with a lever and pop the visor out. And it can be quite difficult at times. Uh, one side went particularly easy, the other side wasn't that easy. You kind of have to manhandle it and use quite a bit of force. Um, it snaps back in very easily, but actually getting it out is a little bit worrisome. But given the design of this helmet, I don't think they really had a lot of choice about that. The operation of the sun visor comes via a lever right in the center of the top of the helmet, so nice and easy to do with either hand. And because of its mechanism, it's not just an open and closed, and there's no sort of ratchet stops in between. You've just got freedom to leave it in any position that you need to along that arc. Uh, and I think that's a really good system. Uh, operating the vents is easy as well. You've just got two levers on the top, really easy to find and really easy to do with gloved hands. You've just got an option of opened or closed. On a chin bar, you just push that in and you get a reasonable amount of airflow through there. It's not huge, but that's good because when you're riding in this in cold weather and you've got everything shut up, it's quite snug. And to help with that, there is a slightly hidden chin sock. It sits in the chin bar nice and flush, but if you pull the little flap it just pops out and closes up that gap at the front there so in ventilation terms with the chin bar down you've got three entry points at the front and you've got two exit points at the rear now another advantage for modular helmets is because the front flips up they're easier to put on which means that the neck curtain is generally a bit bigger and fits snugger on the neck that helps to keep the noise levels down and it also offers a decent amount of insulation 
and you've got exactly the same on this Sharp Evo GT. In fact, the lining for this helmet is very plush. I really do like the feel of this on your head. The lining is fully removable. It can be machine washed. It's very easy to take out. So as well as the lining being plush, it does come with two sets of cheek pads. There is another bag with some thicker ones should you need to make some adjustments to the sizing. So that's really good to see that Shark have actually included those and they're not an extra that you have to pay for. And as you can see with the cheek pads out, there is a recess for speakers in this helmet as well. Shark do have their own proprietary comms unit, which is the Shark Tooth. So fitting that should be relatively easy for this helmet. However, I have heard mixed reviews on the performance of those units. Now I can't really comment on that because I've not got one in hand. And as you know, all of my reviews are tried and tested. So I'm not gonna take uh, anything I see from any other stuff online and just make a, a comment on that. So it would need to be a test to see if that Shark Tooth unit is actually any good. But given the design of this helmet, then there's plenty of options from either people like Senna or Cardo uh, that should fit on here nice and easily. Now, one thing that I do usually forget in reviews is what it's like for glasses wearers, and that's because I don't wear any when I'm riding. Um, obviously, modular helmets are much better for people who wear glasses anyway. So I did try this with some reading glasses that I have, and yep, no problem with those. The arms fit in there. There's a nice amount of space for those to fit. A really good option for those of you that wear glasses when you're riding. Right then, that's enough of the technical stuff. There's only so much you can talk about. Let's have a look at what it's like out on the bike. As I've already mentioned, this helmet weighed in at 1,826 grams in a size large. So that's not particularly light, um, but it didn't feel too bad on the head when riding. It is a very comfortable fit for me. It fits really well. And so that helps with the feel of the helmet. On a full day of riding, I did start to notice it. It's a bit like the Shoei Neo Tech 2. I found that to be quite a heavy helmet as well. And I did think it added to a little bit of fatigue uh, when riding for full days. Vision is optically very clear, but it's not the biggest eye port that you'll find. Uh, the Pinlock 120 helps, so for shoulder checks, there's no problems there. But in normal riding, I did find that the chin bar and indeed the top of the opening helmet was sat in my peripheral vision. And the vision is nowhere near as open as something like the X-Lite X1005. But having said that, I didn't feel claustrophobic in it. I'm just making a note that it's not quite as wide or as tall a vision as you get from some other helmets. We've already talked about the vents and they're really easy to operate with a gloved hand. I had no problems with those and they do work pretty well. Obviously the advantages of a modular helmet is if you do get super hot, you can just flip it open and you get that full blast of air into your face. Now on to the inevitable subject of noise. And I'll put the disclaimer in that I do with every helmet review is that this is a subjective subject. It depends on how the helmet fits you. It depends on what bike you're riding and your height and your build and to a certain extent what clothing you're wearing. So everybody can have a different experience. Now I found this not to be too bad until speeds got a little bit higher. Once you got up above 60, 70 miles an hour, then there was quite a bit of wind noise rushing around all the little bits that's going on around the chin bar. Now I've got to look at both the positives and negatives and there are a few gripes that I've got with the helmet. Uh, the first one is that uh, visor uh, release system. Now admittedly, as I say, you're not gonna keep doing it on and on, but that's a little bit traumatic the first time you come to take that visor out. It feels like you're going to break it. Uh, I don't think you will, but that's just something to be aware of. Now, one other gripe I did have, and it may have been me being a bit ham-fisted, but whilst riding, I grabbed it to pull it over to the top and managed to pull the rubber seal off of the top of the chin bar. It was flapping around a little bit with the visor open. With the visor shut, it's fine. It just pushed it into place. So I stopped, thought I'd snap that back into place, only to find that it doesn't snap back into place. It sits on the lip, but it doesn't clip into place. It appears that it's held at the end with a little glued section. So a simple fix, once I got home, I was able to dab a bit of super glue on there and stick it back into place. It could be, of course, I was just unlucky and this particular helmet didn't have that bit glued in properly, um, but it's something that I needed to mention because it kind of did annoy me for half of a day whilst I was out riding. So pros and cons, 
You've got that two-in-one convertible helmet. It can be worn as a full face helmet or it can be worn as a jet helmet. You get extra cheek pads that come as standard with the helmet. You get a really good drop down visor in this helmet. I really did feel the benefits of that in bright sunshine. And it's quite a funky looking lid at the same time. Onto the negatives. And the first one really is probably the weight. It is quite a heavy helmet. Second is noise. Now generally it's a relatively quiet helmet. I didn't think it was too bad. It was only when speed started to pick up that the wind noise became quite evident. Didn't really have any turbulence or buffeting. Uh, the helmet's very stable. It just tends to be a little bit noisier. And the fact that the chin bar is wider at the front than the rest of the helmet might have something to do with it, but it is something to consider. Thirdly is the visor changing system. It does feel a little bit brutal and it does feel like you're gonna break it initially when you do it. That's something to think about. And finally is that seal on the chin bar. Now, as I said, I may have just been unlucky with that. I may have just hand fistedly pulled it up and grabbed it in the wrong place. But for me, any of those rubber seals as I've seen on most other helmets should just snap back into place. And the fact that this one had to be glued uh, was just another negative for me. The Evo GT comes in a good range of colors and graphics. Price wise, the plain colors retail at $389.99. The graphics come in at $419.99. Uh, there are some deals out there that I've found, so I'll put a link in the description uh, if you wanna go away and have a look at those. But overall, I think this is a really solid helmet at that price. If I've missed anything, or if they've got any questions, then you know where to put those in the comment section down below. And all that leaves me to say is, I hope you have a wonderful 2022. And until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.